The protagonist wakes up in a hospital bed, completely out of breath, with no idea where he is or why he's not dead. He pulls the sheets off his legs, only to realize that his legs are still missing. Confused and disoriented, he has no clue what's going on or even what time it is. Right at that moment, a high school girl walks into the room, her eyes filling with tears as she rushes to hug him, calling him brother. She swears to him that she'll find the driver who crippled him and will bring him to justice. As he hugs her back, trying to reassure her, he realizes that he has regressed back in time. Apparently, our main character, Shen Qing, has gone back in time by a year. It was the time when a car accident literally sent him flying, and he ended up losing his legs. Shen was the youngest billionaire in the country, the chairman of Rising Sun International Group. But that crash left him crippled. After he was hospitalized, his so-called bro Tain Kai, who Shen trusted the most, often visited him. But turns out, this snake was just taking advantage of Shen's situation, seizing control of Rising Sun International Group. He even tried to marry Shen's sister by threatening her, saying he wouldn't allow any medical treatment for her brother. The jerk actually kissed his sister right in front of Shen, and all Shen could do is crawl on the ground, helpless, crying. It was around the same time a game called Divine Path came out, developed by multiple countries with 100% realism. The real money could be exchanged for in-game currency, and it became a global sensation as soon as it dropped. The game had one key twist, which is that your character's attributes in the game could actually affect your real-life abilities. This should have been Shen's best chance to change his fate. But at that time, Shen had no money. Tainkai had taken everything from him, leaving him broke. Without cash, Shen couldn't afford to get good resources in the game right away, and he was doomed to mediocrity. Meanwhile, that snake Tainkai was swimming in wealth. It was the wealth that used to belong to Shen, and that bastard was just spending it like crazy, securing all the best resources and stats. One day, Shen called that bastard into a room, where he had already planted explosives, ready to end it all by taking Tainkai down with him. As soon as Shen pulled the trigger, the place blew up, completely obliterating him. But Tainkai didn't have a scratch on him. He stood there, mocking Shen as he took his last breaths, even going as far as to step over his body, humiliating him one last time. And now, in the present, Shen has been sent back to the moment right after he lost his legs. He's not sure how or why he's been given a second chance, but one thing's for sure. He's not letting this opportunity slip away. This time, he's going to set things right and fix what he couldn't in the past. As the older brother of this naive girl, he feels obligated to protect her and their parents' legacy. He's filled with rage inside as he wants to tear this beast Kai to shreds. He decides that since the game has just been launched, it would take people a month to realize that the game can affect reality. Therefore, this one month is his only chance to turn the tables against Kai. He asks his little sister to get him the gaming pod so that he can start the game. The girl is completely astonished by his request and can't help but wonder what's wrong with her brother. As they are having this conversation, Kai walks in as if he's the only caring person on this planet who cares about Shen. He asks him if he gets addicted to gaming. Who is going to take care of his company? Shen becomes angry upon seeing him, but conceals his emotions and acts nonchalant, attributing it to boredom as he is confined to bed. Kai believes that if Shen is engrossed in his online game, it would be easier for him to take control of his company. He tells Shen that his gaming pod will arrive shortly, and he doesn't have to worry about the company as he's taking care of it for him. Shen sees him reaching for his sister and quickly stops him by saying that his little sister, Xiao Tong, will stay with him tonight as he wants to spend some time together. Kai feels somewhat defeated, but departs unable to do anything. He exits the room and looks at Shen through the window, wondering how this guy could survive. He curses his hitman for not killing this pest and decides to hire an oil tanker to kill him next time. Meanwhile, in the hospital room, Shen asks Tong, his sister, to do him a favor and transfer all his money into the game and sell all the company's stocks. Tong is shocked by this demand of her brother and wonders if he's sick. He reassures her by saying he is not ill and is just taking a big risk. After three hours, his incredibly expensive gaming pod has arrived with a price tag of 500 million. He gets inside it and the game begins. The first thing that he feels after entering the game is how amazing it feels to move his legs freely. As he remembers from before the game begins with the choices of a warrior, mage, ranger, assassin, priest, knight, and summoner. He chooses the class, ranger, that he's familiar with from before. As his avatar changes, he feels super powerful and gets a special reward for being a premium user. Elf Bloodline with epic effect gets activated. He also gets a skillbook reward with weakness detection. He feels ecstatic upon knowing this as he has mastered this skill in his previous life. 
With the premium gaming pod, he also gets a special chest, but to open it, he must spend 50 million. He wonders if he should do it or not. Maybe this is his chance to gamble it, or else Kai will spend it later anyway. After recharging the chest, he gets a reward of Evolve Everything. Upon seeing this, he is both shocked and extremely excited. This rare divine talent is not something that can be easily bought with 50 million gold coins. Shen examined the details of the talent. The first skill guarantees a 100% chance of upgrading a dropped item by one rank, with a 5% chance of triggering intermediate evolution to upgrade the item by two ranks. The second skill guarantees a 100% chance of upgrading any item, tool, skill, or gem by two levels, with a 100% chance to upgrade by three levels. After discovering this ability, he is ecstatic and thinks it is truly game-changing. While other players are only dropping silver and bronze items, Shen will get gold and better. The money he spent is worth it because now he can trample anyone beneath his feet. He is considering joining the game soon to slay some monsters. After that, he intends to test the power of his skill by dropping items. However, the issue is that this ability requires a 24-hour cooldown. After getting ready and completing his preparations, he opens the entrance to the game. Shen believes it's finally time to change his fate. Upon entering the game, he is taken to the beginner's village and is shocked by what he sees. It turns out that he had assumed he would be the only wealthy person in the game, but now it looks like there are quite a few rich folks in this world. He feels a bit confused watching everyone chase a chicken. Shen asks two random people standing near him if killing chickens helps them gain points. Shen is a bit shocked by this and thinks about how silly they are. He knows he needs to make the most of every second to achieve his first goal. He decides to leave because killing the newbie zone boss and taking the first reward is his top priority. As he enters the wild, he gets a warning telling him to be careful as the monsters in this area are dangerous. He decides to ignore it, as he has to quickly kill monsters to level up now. Getting his first kill on the boss will grant extra rewards, and this can't be stolen by others. He opens his inventory to prepare for the upcoming battle. His inventory is filled with items that seem to have no practical value. He wonders if these items can evolve, as it would be difficult to stand out without any unique capabilities. Additionally, the evolution ability can only be used once a day, so he feels it would be a waste not to use it. He wonders if there is anything else in his inventory with a greater potential for evolution. That is when he remembers about his elf bloodline skill, and quickly evolves it. After some few flashy animations, the evolution is successful, and he gets his strength increased. Shen is surprised to see that his skill can evolve the bloodline, and with these strengths, it's easy to kill monsters now. He hears the howl of a wolf and considers trying to locate it. He discovers that other players are attacking the monsters in teams for better safety. However, this team made a critical error because wolves travel in packs, and now the team is surrounded by hungry wolves. In no time, everyone is killed by the wolves. That is when Shen sneakily attacks the wolves with his arrow from behind and gains an additional 100 life points and also obtains wolf meat, which is a healing item. As he is about to level, the other wolves see him and start to howl at him. He notices this and decides that since he has already tested his offensive skill, he wants to test some other things as well. He starts to run and realizes that his speed has also increased. Now he can outrun wolves without needing any additional equipment, which is all thanks to his elf bloodline skill. He turns around and wonders why the wolves have stopped chasing him, but soon realizes he has entered the buffalo zone. This level is of higher difficulty and has level 5 monsters. Suddenly, a girl from behind says, hey, handsome to him. She asks him if he would like to join their team. She tells him that they are planning to hunt buffalo monsters. They should be the first to reach this area since the server opened. However, an unkind person in her team says he can't join them because he is only level 2 and will only hold them back. Shen is feeling uneasy around them and tells them to carry on, as he is heading to another location. A guy with purple hair calls him stupid, but Shen insists that he prefers being a lone wolf. The guy with blue hair warns Shen that the next area is even more dangerous and that no one has ever been there. He asks Shen if he knows the penalty of dying. Shen tauntingly says that he is a low-level noob who hasn't died yet. Would you care to teach him, old man? The blue head takes the bait and begins explaining that once he dies, he is going to lose all his gold and equipment, and even though it's a game, the pain of dying is very real. Furthermore, you will lose the hard-earned experience points, and they will be cut in half. Shen thanked him very nonchalantly and waved them goodbye. However, the girl suggested bringing him along as it was too dangerous for him to be alone. The ugly guy stopped her, saying if this idiot wants to die, just let him do it, and don't waste her energy. Shen arrives at a large cave filled with skulls and bones, causing him to fear for his life. Inside the cave, a large snake is sleeping peacefully until Shen disturbs it. Shen uses one of his skills, 
and can see that it's a level 10 boss, the giant snake king. He also identifies the snake's weakness, located at the back of its neck. Initially at level 2, he receives a 1000 HP from the elf king's blood, increasing his health bar beyond that of the boss. Fearlessly, he loads his bow with an arrow and aims at the snake, but the snake is moving really fast, which is going to make it difficult to hit the boss. He strikes the snake but realizes the attack power is quite low. Fortunately, his speed is fast enough. For a slow-moving monster like this snake, he can simply kite it to death. He tries to shoot the snake at the back and the monster defends its weakness. Shen then gains an attack and speed boost from the king's blood skill and finally manages to strike the snake's weak spot. And in response, the snake releases a cloud of poisonous smoke as its trump card. The poison is decreasing his HP. He feels lost and doesn't know what to do now because, at this rate, he has to restart in less than two and a half minutes. The snake keeps climbing up, increasing the distance between him and Shen. This indicates that the snake wants to reduce his chances of being hit and wear him down to death. Shen calls to the snake and tells it that he underestimates him, then shoots his arrow at it. The arrow hits the snake, dealing 150 in damage. Now the monster is sweating and can't withstand many more hits. Now it's time for a critical hit. If he hits the weak spot, it means double damage. Shen thinks two minutes is enough to finish him off. After getting the critical hit, the snake only attacked him with its tail to avoid getting hit in its weak spot. But this can't stop Shen from attacking the snake. He keeps striking his opponent, and the next critical hit lands on the snake's belly which deals even more damage. Perhaps it's because the opponent's belly is more vulnerable, although its neck, a weak spot, is protected by scales. He believes that this will help him defeat the snake more quickly. As he is about to attack, the snake begins to laugh and strikes back, creating a wall of rocks in front of him. After trapping Shen, the snake starts to spew poison again. Shen's current HP is 600, and it's decreasing by 20 HP per second. He's unable to move up, and even if his HP is doubled, he might not survive this poison. He suddenly remembers the wolf meat he obtained after killing the wolf. He eats it, and his health begins to restore at a rate of 20 HP per second. While this meat doesn't cure poisoning, it counteracts the HP reduction effect. The next outcome will be determined within the next 20 seconds. Shen's power increases, and he decides to attack the snake in its eye. After hitting the snake in the eye, it falls to the ground, allowing him to strike its neck. After getting hit in the neck, the snake screams at Shen with fire in his eyes. Shen loads up the next arrow, shoots it, onto the existing arrow, and splits the arrow in two. After defeating the monster, Shen's HP drops to zero. When the monster dies, Shen receives a victory award, and his poisonous status is removed. He also gets a notification congratulating him for being the first to kill the boss, and achieving the server's first kill, earning a place on the glory board. His accomplishment will be announced across the server three times. Shen is asked if he wants to hide his ID, but he chooses to show it off as he has been hiding for long enough. He then accepts this, and his achievement is announced to the whole game world. He uses an alternative name, Chao Ju Wangge. As everyone becomes notified about the death of the boss, they grow angry, wondering who at level 3 could have soloed the boss. We also see that same trio from before, and they have just defeated a low-level mob, but they think that the monster they just defeated is the real boss monster. The fatty asks his blue head friend what kind of rewards they are going to get for defeating this monster, to which his blue head friend excitedly says that it must be high level equipment. They are getting crazy over the fact that they will get praised by their leader for their efforts. They all receive a notification saying the player Chao Jo Wange has successfully defeated the giant snake king, earning a thousand reputation points and a chest. Both of these fools feel like clowns after realizing that what they defeated was not the boss monster. And what is more mind-boggling to them is that there is actually someone way more powerful than them. Shen, on the other hand, instantly jumped five levels and received a high reward. He also gained 30 more points which he allocated to agility. For assassins and rangers, adding agility increases both attack power and evasion, with the greatest gains in attack speed and movement speed. This victory marks a perfect start for him. He checks the loot dropped by his kill and finds 10 silver coins, which then magically transform into 10 gold coins. Shen is ecstatic upon receiving 10 gold coins in the beginner area, feeling like an absolute tycoon. Meanwhile, somewhere in the wild, the buffalo hunters receive only one bronze coin after grinding all day, which feels like a joke. They are literally crying as they think about how unfair this trash game is. Shen's body emanates a golden glow, raising the possibility of a second evolution being triggered. He discovered a rare item in the game, a crystal coin. Crystal gems can be used to purchase special and unknown items from NPCs, and giving them to NPCs can significantly increase their favorability. 
He recalled hearing about it in his previous life, but had never actually seen it before. However, he knew it would come in handy soon. He stored the dropped items in his backpack and continued to open new items. The next item he received was a silver one-handed sword in the shape of a snake. However, it was useless to our archer since it wasn't a bow. He decided to keep it so he could sell it for money and earn good points. The next item is an azure scale armor. He recalls that the normal quality azure scale armor had no special effects, just some attribute bonuses. But this one is silver level 1 and even has a shield effect. However, it requires him to be on level 10 to use it. This ruins his mood, but he remembers about the silver chest he got and wonders what could be in it. He opens the chest hoping he doesn't get any trash this time. As he opens it, the first thing he gets is 7 star chain arrows. These arrows consume 50 magic points and shoot 7 arrows continuously at the target. Each arrow deals true damage equal to 1% of the target's maximum health, but it has a requirement of level 10. Discovering this rare item, Shen is ecstatic and thinks this skill is godly and exclusive to archers. However, this stupid requirement is still here and it sucks. When he reaches level 10, his damage will significantly increase, so he needs to level up quickly. As he is about to level up in the cave, he suddenly hears a voice coming from inside. Someone is calling for help. Shen looks behind the rock and finds a girl lying there. She asks him to help her and save her from the giant snake. Her name is Lady Gu. Shen recognizes her as an NPC rumored to give players hidden quests. He says that the giant snake is taken care of and is gone now so she can come out now. She shows him how her foot is injured and how she can't walk out and asks Shen to carry her out. He looks a bit flustered and decides to help her as he has no other way. After he carries her out, she gently strokes Shen's face and thanks him in a very flirty way, saying that the next time they meet, she is going to take very good care of him. But as soon as he hears the words next time, he throws her to the ground. However, Ji Yu says she doesn't have much to repay him with other than her body. Seductively, she asks him if he wants to, but he screams at her to stop her behavior. She's impressed by him and offers him a black moon blade, but Shen doesn't fall for that. He asks her to give him the hidden class, but Ji Yu tries to play dumb, asking what hidden class is he talking about. But he is not playing any games with her and threatens her. He tells her that if she doesn't help him, he might have to find her 15-year-old daughter. Ji Yu becomes frightened after hearing the threat and agrees to help him. She uses her powers to guide him to the hidden class. She shows him the hidden class trial and tells him that if he passes, he will get access to the hidden class. Upon seeing this, she becomes very happy and excited. He thanks her, but she interrupts him and smirks a little before telling him not to hurry in thanking her. Getting this response from her, Shen is a bit confused and wonders what she is saying. But before he could ask her, he gets a notification which shocks him to the core. He gets a shadow hunter trail with a difficult level where failure means permanent disqualification. Shen is scared of the hard level because he only has one chance. He confronts Ji Yu and asks her if there is any mistake. He is just on level 7, he should be doing normal and beginner level. This level will kill him. His leg is trapped and he can't even get out or even move. Outside, Ji Yu laughs and says how dare he set his plans on her daughter. She says that his end is here now. Shen also sees a system panel that says that the Gu's favorability has reached zero. Upon seeing this, he thinks that he might have a chance to get away if he improves the favorability first. Before he could think of anything else, the portal started to open, and he couldn't do anything about it now. Ji Yu says whether he can pass or not depends on his skills now. But he tells her not to underestimate him, and that as soon as he gets out, he will go find her daughter. The portal opens in the sky of another world. There is sand everywhere, and he doesn't know where he has been brought by this stupid portal. He receives a notification about a difficult level. Shadow Hunter. His trial begins, and Shen knows that this is serious. It's either die or pass. Suddenly, he notices a horn-like object emerging from the sand. Before he could get a good look at it, the horn expanded and engulfed Shen. A huge, terrifying sandworm emerges from the ground, its enormous mouth filled with horn-like teeth. Shen wonders if this is the trial enemy. He activates weakness detection and discovers that it has a level of 5, a defense rating of 30, 2,000 health points, and a movement speed of 11. Its weakness is the center of its mouth. Shen figures out that this sandworm is not high level, but it's tough and thick-skinned. He attacks the worm in the center of its mouth and shoots an arrow, decreasing health by minus 130. If every arrow hits its mouth, it's a win for him. The sandworm prepares to strike Shen head-on, a move that seems illogical to Shen since he plans to target the center of the worm's mouth. Despite dodging the attack, Shen feels a jolt from the impact. He realizes that if he had been hit directly, the force might have been devastating possibly shattering him. The sandworm dives into the ground, leaving a gaping hole behind. 
This causes Shen concern, as tracking its movements underground becomes challenging. Peering into the hole, he observes the worm's surprising agility beneath the surface. When it resurfaces, Shen will have less than a second to react. Shen doubts his ability to dodge every attack, so he needs to find a sturdy spot to minimize his vulnerability to ambushes. He scans the area for a nearby rocky outcrop where he can take a stand. He spots a nearby tower and determines it would be an ideal vantage point for his attack. However, before he can reach it, the sandworm bursts out of the ground. Seizing the opportunity, Shen decides to strike the worm multiple times while he can. Shen's attacks significantly reduce the worm's health. Although the creature is hideous, the battle becomes manageable as long as Shen avoids being ambushed from below. However, while Shen is airborne, the worm surprises him with a sand spit attack. The sudden assault catches him off guard, and his health drops to minus 52. His vision is now reduced by 50%, and his attack accuracy suffers a 30% decrease. The cursed worm had left Shen blinded, and if it ambushed him now, he might not have survived. He needed to reach the pillar urgently. As he fired his arrows, he was pushed back against the tower. Without seeing the worm, Shen could only guess where to shoot. After taking a hit, the worm burrowed deep into the ground once more. From the previous few arrows that hit their mark and the two ambushes from below, it's clear that the worm's attacks are far too predictable. Once you grasp its pattern, dodging and counterattacking become effortless. As the blinding effect wears off, Shen's vision clears, making this the perfect moment to strike back. He taunts the worm, drawing it to the surface. The creature erupts from the ground with a sudden burst of power, unleashing its sand spit attack. But this time, Shen is prepared. Using a nearby stone pillar, he deftly shifts direction in midair, dodging the attack easily. Shen fires an arrow, reducing the worm's health by another 260 points. At that moment, he realizes the creature only has two predictable, lackluster moves, the sand spit and its burrowing ambush. Seeing its limitations, Shen seizes the opportunity, deciding it's time to finish the battle once and for all. Shen soars into the sky, unleashing a flurry of arrows straight into the worm's gaping mouth, each strike rapidly depleting its health. For the final blow, he aims carefully and fires an arrow directly into its head. The worm's health drops to zero, and with that, the sandworm is defeated. After the intense battle, Shen's level rises to 8i, and his 10 copper coins evolve into 10 silver coins. He also earns new loot, including a pair of bronze-quality sand boots. These boots, while unable to be upgraded, offer special movement benefits in sandy terrains. However, Shen is unimpressed with the loot. For a worm of that size, all he got were these worthless boots. He couldn't help but feel disappointed. Such a huge battle, and all he received was this junk. Frustrated, Shen mutters to the fallen worm. If it weren't for the decent XP, he have stomped on it a few more times. Just as he's about to turn away, the words etched into the stone pillar nearby suddenly begin to glow, catching his attention. Shen stares at the glowing words, puzzled. The tablet has eight identical words written, but only the one at the bottom is glowing. He wonders why this single word has come to life while the others remain dull. As Shen pieces things together, he notices more worms approaching. He wonders if wiping them all out is the key to clearing this level. Quickly, he scales the pillar, realizing it's the perfect vantage point. A smirk crosses his face as he thinks about how ideal this spot is for leveling up. Staying on the ground is no longer an option. Every step could summon seven massive worms from all directions. No matter how quick Shen is, facing that many at once would be impossible to handle. These worms have been attacking based on vibrations from the ground. If Shen fires an arrow into the earth, it could trigger a wave of them at once, overwhelming him and possibly even destroying his only safe spot. He needs to lure them out strategically and take them down one by one. Shen opens his inventory and decides to use his silver coins, knowing they'll create a stronger impact than the lighter copper ones. He tosses the coins onto the ground, sending vibrations that alert the worms below. As soon as they surface, he aims and shoots them down from his tower. However, the attack barely affects the worm's health since he missed hitting it square in the face. He realizes the angle from the tower makes it tough to land a direct hit, but it doesn't bother him. With plenty more coins at his disposal, he's confident he can keep luring them into his trap. Shen spends hours tossing coins to trigger vibrations, hunting down the worms from his tower. After nearly four hours, he finally wipes them all out. His level rises to 10, with 15 unassigned attribute points. He earns a total of 80 silver coins, while his mana increases by 30 points and his health by 330 points. He realizes he's hit level 10 without even noticing. These massive worms gave a ton of XP, and now he has 15 unassigned attribute points. As he opens his stats, 
he starts to wonder why his loot has been so terrible. Then it hits him. Maybe it's because his luck stat is sitting at zero in this game. He allocates all his 15 attribute points to luck, boosting it to 15. This increases his hit rate to 81 and his evasion to 16. His passive evolution activates, bringing him great satisfaction as it proves to be extremely useful. He tests this new power on the dead worm lying on the ground and reflects on his past life. He recalls how he couldn't afford upgrades and had to focus his limited attribute points solely on attack and health, neglecting other important areas. Suddenly, a purple light emanates from the worm, signaling a legendary item drop. Shen eagerly inspects the loot and discovers he's received a legendary skill, Sand Escape. Seeing the drop, his frustration boils over. The legendary skill, Sand Escape, seems unimpressive to him. While it might have some use for survival or surprise attacks, he can't help but feel a bit down. He spends 10 silver coins to learn the Sand Escape skill. He then decides to acquire the previous skill from the silver chest, investing another 20 silver coins in it. Finally, he equips the blue armor he obtained earlier, which provides a good boost to his defense. He realizes he must be the highest level player on the server now. Suddenly, all the words on the tower light up, and the remaining monsters are dead on the ground. As he considers his next move, he feels a massive earthquake. The gates of the tower swing open, and a strong blue beam of light comes out from within. He decides to venture inside, thinking that the real reward might be waiting for him there. It's the perfect moment to test out his new skills and equipment. Just as he prepares to enter, he hears Tong calling his name, announcing that she's made porridge for him. Shen asks Tong if she climbed up to the game pod and urges her to come down before she injures herself. At the same time, he receives a game alert asking if he wants to exit the game. He declines, knowing that leaving before completing the level will permanently prevent him from unlocking the hidden class. He tells Tong to hold on and explains that he's in the middle of a game and doesn't have time right now. Tong responds that he's been playing for the past eight hours and is still recovering. She warns him that if he keeps this up, she'll be very upset with him. He rudely tells Tong to behave and not to disturb him while he's gaming. Angered by his response, she slams the bowl of porridge onto the table next to the gaming pod and says that she doesn't care about him. As she storms out, Tong reflects on how things have come to this. She worries about how she can help her brother recover. In the game, he reassures her, telling his little sister to be patient and wait for him to become stronger. He strides into the tower and shouts, saying, Shadow Hunter, he is coming for him. As he steps inside, he receives a notification warning that the area is extremely dangerous and that he should proceed with caution. Realizing this might be the true boss room, he braces himself for the challenge ahead. Suddenly, he is confronted by a massive monster with red legs and huge teeth. Stunned, he wonders what a crab is doing in the desert. The creature is identified as a gold-level boss named Sand King, with the following stats. Attack 200, Level 15, Defense 80, Health 6000, and a special ability called Sandstorm. He feels a bit of fear as he sees the Sand King's enormous health. It's overwhelming. He attempts to detect its weaknesses, but finds none. The creature doesn't have any weakness. Unable to detect any weaknesses, Shen assumes that due to the crab's massive size, it must be slow. But before he can act, the Sand King strikes, sending him flying backward. He quickly realizes the crab's attacks generate shockwaves that give serious damage. Thankfully, Shen's armor provides a 300-point shield, absorbing most of the impact. Without it, his health would have taken a severe hit. He realizes just how powerful the Sand King truly is. No wonder it's a gold-level boss. Dodging its foot stomps alone won't be enough to survive this battle. Shen strikes the Sand King from behind, but to his shock, his attack only reduces its health by a single point. He realizes that when the boss's defense exceeds his attack power, his damage is drastically reduced. Understanding that dodging by jumping won't work against the shockwaves, he decides he must rely on his speed advantage to evade its attacks or risk getting caught in the powerful blasts. Unable to find a way to dodge the powerful shockwaves, Shen quickly scales the crab's leg in an attempt to hide. However, the Sand King reacts swiftly, tossing him high into the air with a sudden jerk, leaving him scared mid-flight. He seizes the opportunity to be tossed into the air, firing a group of seven star-linked arrows at the Sand King from above. Each hit drastically reduces the crab's health. The seven star arrows have a unique advantage. The higher the enemy's health, the more damage, making every shot even more lethal. The Sand King charges at full speed in retaliation, shattering his shield and dropping his health by 100 points. Despite the damage, Shen quickly hops above the crab's giant head and tries to fire his seven-star arrows. But to his dismay, he fails to shoot his seven-star arrow because he is almost out of mana with only 32 points left behind out of 82. 
Looks like he will have to wait for his next 7-star arrow attack because he can only recover 5 mana points per minute with his auto recovery, which means he will have to wait at least 4 minutes. The crab begins to walk as if it is trying to topple our boy off from its back, but Shen just lands back on the ground by himself, and that is when the system flashes a notification that the monster's weakness has been detected and has been marked. He is curious to see this and wonders why he failed to detect the weakness earlier. The system then flashes the notification that the weak spot of the monster is its abdomen. Then, a sudden realization struck him. Basically, its weak spot was right there, in its abdomen. And the fact that he failed to detect it earlier was because its weakness has been cleverly hidden beneath the crab's tough exterior until now. A notification flashes before Shen's eyes. Sand King's ultimate danger detected. 100 damage per second. Movement restriction. 60 seconds of blindness. Before he could fully process it, the crab unleashes its storm-like attack. The wind pressure hit him like a wall, pinning him in place. His legs feel glued to the ground, unable to move under the sheer force. The damage is bad enough, but the duration is unbearable. This storm is draining his strength, each second more punishing than the last. He quickly realizes that staying trapped in the storm will be fatal, or at the very least, leave him greatly injured. The fierce wind made it nearly impossible to stay on his feet, let alone fight back. He struggles against the pressure, but before he can react, the storm swallows him. Minutes pass, and suddenly, Shen burst from beneath the ground, catching the Crab King off guard. With a sudden calculated strike, he delivers a sneak attack, successfully weakening the creature and reducing its health. The Crab unleashes the storm again, but this time, Shen is ready. As the wind howls around him, he quickly activates the sand escape skill he mastered earlier. The technique allows him to do most of the ground damage, slipping through the storm like a shadow. Hidden beneath the shifting sands, he gets into the position and launches a counterattack on the Crab King, turning the tables of the battle. The Crab strikes at him, and the battle rages on. Shen kept landing blows, though his attacks weren't causing much damage. They were enough to provoke the creature, keeping its attention on him. Suddenly the Crab speaks, calling him a jerk. He pauses for a moment, thrown off by the fact that this massive creature could talk. The unexpected insult left him weirded out. After three long hours of battle, the crab's health has dropped significantly. Shen's seven-star arrow was ready again, and he knew it was time to finish things. He calls out to the crab, warning it to go on and make its move, or he'll strike first. But to his surprise, the crab says, he gives up and can't take this torture anymore. The fight drains the creature, and Shen can see its will to continue has faded completely. Shen doesn't want to drag the fight out any longer, but the crab's defense is still incredibly tough. Without hesitation, he fires a special seven-star arrow, aiming to end it once and for all. The arrow pierces the crab from behind and below, and its weak points are exposed. The creature finally collapses, unable to take it anymore. As the battle ends, Shen levels up three more times, bringing his total to 13 levels in a single day. He can't help but smile, realizing he is probably the first to achieve such a rapid rise in power. A notification pops up offering Shen the chance to change his hidden class to Phantom Hunter. After a moment's hesitation, he finally chose to make the switch. As the transformation takes hold, he thinks about the immense effort and countless battles that have led him to this point. All the hard work had paid off, and now, as a Phantom Hunter, he felt more powerful than ever. Shen successfully changes his class, immediately boosting his stats. On top of that, he learns that with every future level up, he is going to receive additional attribute points. Overjoyed by the increase in power, he felt unstoppable. As a bonus, he unlocks two new skills unique to the Phantom Hunter class. Both were growth-type skills that would evolve and become incredibly powerful over time. The possibilities excite him, and Shen can't wait to see just how strong he will become. The 100% damage boost from his Death Trap skill, combined with the Phantom's raw power, made Shen's attacks lethal, capable of instant kills. It truly lived up to the title of a hidden class. Shen can't help but wonder what other abilities the Phantom can evolve into as he grows stronger. Reflecting on his progress, he realizes that investing in luck points has been a brilliant decision. Satisfied, Shen checks his gold stats and sets an ambitious new goal for himself, earning one billion gold. It is just the beginning of what he aims to achieve. As Shen checks through his items, he comes across an impressive bow, an armor-piercing bow with high defense stats. Along with it, he finds steel gauntlets, silver tier, and a gleaming golden greatsword. He admires the sword, thinking it looks incredible, but knows he can't wield it himself. The thought of selling it crosses his mind, but he feels a bit of guilt about selling such a valuable item. Maybe, 
he can give it to someone else later who can make better use of it. He discovers a life amulet among his drops, noticing that three out of its four amulet slots are still empty. As he reviews his stats, he sees 20 unallocated attribute points and promptly adds them all to agility, boosting his speed. Just as he was checking his stats, a notification appeared. He had been playing for over 15 hours and would soon be forcibly logged out. The abrupt reminder made him realize how absorbed he'd been in the game. Frustrated by the sudden logout, he curses at the game, saying how the relentless grind has been interrupted. Despite his anger, the system completes the forced logout, and he finds himself waking up in his gaming pod. He can't help but wonder why there is an anti-addiction system in place. Everything is falling into place perfectly, and at this rate, Shen is confident that Xiao Tian and everyone who had betrayed him will soon face their reckoning. In his hospital room, Shen noticed Tong sleeping peacefully in his bed. He glances at her, then at the porridge she brought him earlier. The smell is enticing, and he begins to eat, thinking how Tong has always been a pampered princess, never needing to lift a finger since childhood. Yet, now she is enduring so much to care for him, showing a side of herself he hasn't seen before. Once his revenge is complete, he is going to ensure Tong will live a life of comfort and happiness. However, as he took the first bite of the porridge, his nose began to bleed, and he realized the harsh reality. Its taste was like a block of salt boiled in bitter bile. The commotion woke Tong from her slumber, and she excitedly asked if he had finally stopped playing games. He quickly masked his discomfort, pretending everything was fine. He offered an apology for disturbing her rest. Tong's eyes lit up with excitement as she asked if he liked the porridge she had made for him. Masking his true feelings, he smiles and praises it as it is fresh and super delicious. She urges him to finish it, assuming he must be starving. Struggling to hide his discomfort, Shen forces himself to eat every last bit, all the while throwing up on the inside. The next morning, he wakes up to find a nurse standing by his bedside. She has a striking presence, and with a concerned look, she informs him that he had experienced vomiting and diarrhea the previous day, which had worried her. Despite the situation, she couldn't help but notice Shen's handsome features and the aura of wealth about him. In her mind, she saw an opportunity. If she stayed by his side, she could enjoy a life of luxury. Shen reassures her, saying he is fine and is just exhausted from playing games all day yesterday. The nurse, visibly relieved, comforts him and says, if he needs anything, just let her know. She is here to do whatever it takes to help her master recover. He takes the opportunity to ask her if she wants to be helpful by pushing his wheelchair to the game pod, as he is eager to play. The nurse is taken aback, wondering why he seems unaffected by her presence and whether she is truly insignificant to him. She begins to question if her appearance, despite her efforts, wasn't quite up to par. As Shen logs back into the game, he sees that the current number of online players has reached 300,000. Many are joining through cheaper VR devices. With the global player base expected to exceed 100 million within a month, Shen knows he needs to level up quickly to stay ahead. He opens his equipment panel and realizes he needs top-tier gear to tackle bosses above level 20. He heads to a shop to upgrade his armor, where the shopkeeper greets him warmly. Noticing Shen's silver armor, the shopkeeper asks what he can do to help him today, and if he is looking for something to enhance his gear. As Shen surveys the shop, he sees that it is filled with bronze-level items, which are of little use to him. Realizing that the shopkeeper has likely hidden the golden items, Shen addresses him directly, saying he is interested in treasure-level items, so what can he show him? The shopkeeper informs Shen that the only items in the shop are the ones on display, and there are no golden items available. He adds that even if he did have such items, Shen wouldn't be able to afford them. Just then, Shen presents him with a blue gem, and the shopkeeper's eyes widen in astonishment as he stares at the gem in disbelief. The shopkeeper, visibly impressed by the gem, opened a secret door to a hidden chamber filled with highly exclusive items. These items were typically reserved for sale in 30 days, but since Shen was wealthy, he was granted access to choose whatever he wanted. Amidst the items, Shen's attention is drawn to a mask carefully encased in a glass box. Pointing to it, he tells the shopkeeper he wants that one. The shopkeeper, impressed by Shen's discernment, explains he has an eye for quality. This is the only golden mask in the game since the server opened. There's only one in the entire server. It was originally set to be sold for at least 200,000 gold coins starting in a month. The shopkeeper then decides to give our boy a little discount, but before he can finish speaking, my guy simply pays the complete amount of 200,000 gold coins. Shen tells him to keep the discount, saying he doesn't need it, but requests that he be notified if any valuable items come in the future. The shopkeeper agrees, and Shen leaves the shop satisfied. Shen considers that 200,000 gold coins is equivalent to 2 million in cash. For a unique piece of headgear, it is a reasonable price. He put on the HE mask, 
noting that he has the option to display it or not. True to its gold-grade status, the mask is impressively advanced. In the village, everyone stares at Shen and at the extraordinary mask he is wearing. One onlooker voices disbelief, saying there's no way he could have obtained a gold-grade item. He must be cheating as it's not even listed in the official shop. Suddenly, a man with long hair taps him on the shoulder from behind and asks him to slow down. Shen turns to him, questioning what he wants from him. The man admires Shen's gear and says his equipment looks impressive. How about lending it to them for a bit, as it would be great to play around with it. Shen asks him why should he do that. The man replies, it's clear he must have cheated to get that mask, so he should hand it over to them. If he doesn't want to risk getting banned, he'll do as he's told. Shen asks them if they are trying to rob him. As the commotion grew, more people gathered, noticing the confrontation. Whispers spread, accusing Shen of cheating, which only fueled his anger. The lackeys of this big bastard decides to teach Shen a lesson. The long-haired man demands him to hand over the mask, or they'll kill him, and send him back to the respawn point. Each time he returns, they'll make sure to do it again. Shen looks around, disgusted by the crowd's ignorance and their tendency to believe every rumor. They can't stand seeing others succeed. Noticing that they are all only level 4 players, he says that all of these people are level 4 noobs and to come at him if they want to test him now. He warns them saying with a single blow he is going to open holes in their stomachs and blow their heads off. As he speaks, the mask changes its shape to a white tiger. In an instant, the three of his opponents charged at him, but before anyone could grasp what was happening, the three of them were already on the ground, bleeding and gasping. Shen turns to them and asks if they still want to try and kill him every time he respawns. He adds with a smirk saying his ID is morning wine, evening song, and feel free to come after him anytime. The crowd murmurs as one person recalls Shen's ID. He quickly instructs his partner to check the leaderboard, and to their astonishment, Shen is at the top rank. This revelation leaves everyone in stunned silence. After beating the hell out of those cocky punks, my guy strides out of the place, leaving the crowd in awe as they finally realize he's the top player in the game right now. That bloodied bastard's pride is now dirt on the ground, and he's still trying to wrap his head around how this guy could actually be the best. Once Shen is out, he decides to focus on the task at hand, and eventually, he finds the little girl he's been looking for. He calls out to her and mentions her as little girl, and approaches her with a smile on his face, asking if she knows Madame Gu. The girl pouts at being called a little girl, and tells him not to call her that since they're not that far apart in age. Seeing her attitude, Shen is convinced she's definitely Madame Gu's daughter. Just to be sure, he asks her if her name is Gu Linger, and if she's Gu's daughter. Of course, she is indeed Gu's daughter, but she's curious about how he knows her name. Then, my guy leans in and reminds her of the promise her mother made to marry her off to him in five years. The news comes as a total shock to the girl, and she bolts off like a kid, rushing to her mother to ask why in the world she'd marry her off. Hearing her daughter's calls, Madame Gu steps out of her humble abode and asks what's going on. The girl immediately hugs her mom, asking if she really promised her hand in marriage to someone. Of course, her mother has no idea what she's talking about. Right at that moment, Shen appears from behind, and when Madame Gu spots him, she's not only bewildered but also a bit annoyed that he actually managed to pass the difficult trial. My guy smirks, confirming he's made it this far, and also kept his word by finding her daughter. With a sigh, Madame Gu reluctantly asks him what wish he wants fulfilled, making it clear that if he asks for anything sketchy, she'll take off without a second thought. Shen is taken aback by her reaction, but then he remembers NPCs can be easily threatened, so he tries to keep it cool, telling her not to worry. He just wants a map for the intermediate dungeon. The lady shoots him a suspicious glare and tells him she doesn't have anything like that. Shen realizes he's not getting anywhere just by talking, so he decides to show her something to get her to cooperate. He balls up his fist, which instantly makes both mother and daughter a bit nervous. But contrary to what they might have expected, he's only holding out a stone. With a grin, he holds it out and tells them to take it as a token of gratitude for letting him take the hidden class trial earlier. Both ladies light up in excitement at the sight of the shiny stone, and their favorability toward him shoots up by 50 points. Madame Gu can hardly believe her eyes and, practically drooling, asks if she can actually keep it. The girl quickly snatches the stone out of her mother's hand and starts admiring it, thanking my guy for the gift. Madame Gu rushes over to take the stone back in order to return it to Shen, but the little girl digs in her heels and it looks like she is willing to marry just to keep the shiny rock. Of course, marrying her was just a joke from Shen, and he never thought she'd take it seriously. But he plays along, saying he'll marry her if her mother can give him the intermediate map first. Surprisingly, Madame Gu agrees right away, explaining that according to the rules, the intermediate map can only be handed out 20 days after the server opens. 
However, since her daughter took a gem from him, she's willing to let him in on a secret that the system gave the village chief permission to hand out the map to players who like challenges. The little girl quickly chimes in with some juicy info, saying she knows where the village chief's house is and is ready to take him there. Later, we arrive at the village chief's house, where we spot a cat girl lounging around in her backyard, clearly just about to drift off for a nap. Suddenly, she notices something in the sky. Turns out it's Gu Linger, who falls like a goddamn meteor straight onto the poor cat girl, leaving her coughing up blood and probably losing one of her nine lives. After a few minutes, once everyone's settled into their seats, Shen gets right to the point, making it clear he needs the intermediate dungeon map to leave the beginner village. The cat girl laughs at his determination, telling him not to rush since he's only level 13. She advises him to come back when he's level 20. That's when Shen tosses one of those shiny gems her way. The cat girl laughs, amused by his attempt to bribe the village chief. But as it turns out, even a village chief can't resist a shiny stone. She takes it anyway, though she tries to keep a straight face, insisting that she's definitely not helping him because of the bribe. No, she claims she's an upright and honest character, but Shen knows too well that the gem has definitely sweetened the deal. While the cat girl slides the stone into her stash, Linger quickly reaches into her pocket, grabs the gem, and tosses it back to Shen, declaring that since the village chief is an honest and upright person, she shouldn't be taking that shiny goodness. Seeing Linger step up like that, Shen realizes she's not as clueless as she seems. Back to business, the cat girl reminds him that trying to leave the beginner village at level 13 is a bad idea, since even the bugs outside are at least level 20. Until he gains a decent amount of experience, she can't give him what he wants. But my guy pushes back, asking what if he proves his strength and worth. At this point, even the cat girl knows he's not going to back down without the map, so she agrees to his terms. She tells him she has a task for him, and if he completes it, she'll hand over the intermediate map. The cat girl stands at the edge of the mountain cliff, pointing out that every year, the village gets attacked by a pack of wolves. Occasionally, brave players come to help fend them off, but the problem is never fully solved. That's because there's a leader behind the pack, a fierce beast known as the White Wolf King. She gives him the challenge to take down the White Wolf King and bring back its pelt. Just then, a system window pops up with a quest called White Wolf King, promising the intermediate dungeon map as a reward, along with a Wolf Slayer title, White Wolf Pants, and 10 silver coins. With a confident smirk, my guy agrees to take on the challenge. He tells her to keep the map ready because he'll be back before she knows it. His future wife then starts protesting to tag along, but Shen tells her to go back to her mother. The girl stubbornly stands her ground, insisting she wants to protect the village and help defeat the White Wolf King. Shen complains to the village chief about keeping her under control, while Linger clings to his legs, refusing to budge. That's when the system throws a twist into his story, notifying him that he must protect Linger at all costs. This is the last thing he wanted to hear. Now that he's stuck with her, he has no choice but to tolerate this annoying girl. He grumbles for her to get off his back, but she starts crying, saying she won't let him go on an adventure alone. Eventually, he reluctantly agrees to let her tag along, which makes her light up with happiness. Once they venture into the thick of the woods, he checks his system and reveals to us that they have arrived at the place. Linger starts feeling scared, and her anxiety grows when they hear a painful scream echoing through the trees. While Shen is excited and immediately heads in the direction of the scream, Linger isn't so sure they should go that way. Later, Shen spots a group of adventurers near the wolves, and he approaches them, asking about the location of the wolves' lair. One guy wielding a giant sword steps forward, questioning why Shen wants to know. He claims that this area is their hunting ground, and nobody else is allowed to grind levels here. We then also notice that these guys are just a bunch of rookies, with most of them are just level 6 and 7. He gives them a curious look and asks what that's supposed to mean while the guy with the massive sword tries to flex his guild emblem, boasting that they're part of the biggest guild around, the Green Snake Gang. Although the guy says green, the emblem on his shoulder looks red to me. Anyhow, from the look on Shen's face, it's clear he couldn't care less about their guild status. The guy with the big sword keeps rambling about how the buffalo area ahead is also claimed by his gang. He insists that if anyone wants to grind levels, they have to pay a fee. Otherwise, they should just head back to the beginner village to hunt chickens. Then, he spots Linger behind Shen and asks about her, but Shen makes it clear that it's none of their business. Shen pokes fun at their so-called efficient grinding methods, but the big sword guy turns the tables, mocking Shen instead for not realizing how potent and convenient wild wolves are. He argues that even though these creatures are low level, they're still safe to grind. Suddenly little Linger notices something ominous approaching and quickly points it out. When Shen looks in that direction, he sees a dark, menacing wolf presence coming from the west. Shen does not waste any more time arguing with those rookies, and leaves them behind, making sure to put some distance between himself and the group before it's too late. 
He leaps off a nearby tree, and the goons shout after him, demanding he come back since he doesn't have a single penny to hunt in this area. Shen can't believe these guys aren't concerned about the ominous presence of the White Wolf King at all. It makes him wonder if they're completely oblivious to the danger. But it seems this arrogant party is about to learn a hard lesson in humility. The monster finally arrives, and in an instant, it chomps down on one of the adventurers, the bite so powerful that it devours her whole, leaving nothing but a pair of legs behind. The once arrogant fools are now nothing more than scaredy cats, running for their pathetic lives. But this giant beast isn't called the King of the Wolves for no reason. It takes a massive leap from its spot, disappearing and reappearing right behind the loudmouth who'd been yapping the most. The monster is so fast that it feels like there are multiple copies chasing each of the goons. One of the adventurers finally meets an untimely demise with just a single swipe from the creature's claw. Meanwhile, Shen is just watching this chaos unfold from the sidelines. He takes a quick look at the monster's stats and finds out it's a level 20 beast, with its weak points being the abdomen and eyes. Interestingly, its special skills are still unknown to the system. Shen realizes that the monster's unknown skills likely come from its sudden appearances and disappearances, which can't be explained by its current speed stats. He decides to test the monster again by shooting an arrow at it, but little Linger quickly stops him. She warns that they shouldn't attract unwanted attention without being prepared. After swallowing the adventurer's hole, the monster starts to make its exit, and Shen decides to follow it. But once again, Linger advises against it. She reminds him that the five adventurers earlier drew the Wolf King's aggro because they killed too many wolves. If he attracts its attention with his current combat ability, he'll be dead for sure. They need to be fully prepared before taking their next step. Shen decides to take Linger's advice, and seeing how much she cares about him, he figures raising her affection level isn't a bad idea. Then Linger pulls out this gadget she calls an auto-pathfinding map, almost like Doraman ready to save Nobita's ass. Shen raises an eyebrow and asks why she didn't take this out sooner. She gives him a playful wink, saying she wanted to make herself useful and prove that her coming along wasn't such a bad idea after all. Shen absorbs the map into his system, feeling pretty smug as he tells her to watch him evolve its bloodline skill again. But his excitement doesn't last long. The system promptly informs him that he can't evolve yet. A bit embarrassed by his failed attempt, he decides to focus on evolving the pathfinding skill for now instead. Shen activates his phantom skill and suddenly, water starts to coalesce, transforming into a clone of himself. Linger exclaims in shock at the sight of a watery twin. Both Shens snicker as they feel proud of themselves. And then real Shen decides to test his clone's abilities by making it shoot the seven-star arrow. The clone promptly loads up a bunch of arrows into its bow, but Shen quickly stops it, telling it not to use it yet. He's just thrilled to see that his clone can replicate his skills, which is to be expected from the hidden class he's got, he figures. Then a thought strikes him hard that if this clone can use skills, maybe it can evolve too. Right on cue, he instructs the clone to activate evolution. As the phantom clone undergoes the transformation, Shen's hunch proves correct. This trick actually works. The system window pops up, showing that after the evolution, the summoned phantom clone count has increased from 1 to 2. The phantom clone now inherits 60% of his attack power, up from 40%, and the duration has been extended from 30 seconds to a full 60 seconds. This skill feels like the ultimate cheat in gaming history. Even Linger, who is just a random NPC, is bewildered and wonders aloud if he's using some kind of hack. But Shen reminds her that this skill is way too broken and powerful to be even called a cheat. With more manpower under his belt, he asks her what the success rate is against the Wolf King. She quickly responds that it's risen by 20%. Shen chuckles as he retracts his clones, already thinking of ways to boost that number even higher. He then evolves his 7-star arrow skill, and the system promptly shows all the power boosts it gained. Contrary to his expectations, though, the skill didn't increase the arrow count to 8 from 7. It just powered up the existing attack even more. He summons both clones and tries to evolve his second one, too. But the system gets in his way. Turns out evolution is still on cooldown. Shen wonders if maybe the phantom clones inherits the body's stats and skill cooldowns, and since he just used evolution on the main body, the clone's evolution must also be on hold. After some thought, he decides to make the most of his phantom upgrades before worrying about evolution cooldowns again. Setting it aside for now, Shen decides to move forward in order to form a different plan to boost his odds. Linger looks up at him, asking where they're headed next. Shen just tells her to follow his lead. The scene transitions to the river, where a giant crocodile is trying to gobble up some little fish. But just before it can catch its prey, Shen pierces the ugly beast right through the head. This hunt is not only going to fill their appetites, but also restore stats and cooldowns. He summons his phantom to handle the butchering, and exactly one hour later, Linger enjoys a hearty, delicious meal that completely satisfies her hunger. This little treat even boosts her affection for Shen. He checks his inventory, 
which is now stocked with advanced carp meat that will passively support him by increasing his MP and other stats. Shen figures that combined with the phantoms, these recovery items should be enough to take on the Wolf King. He asks Linger what their current winning rate is. She thinks for a moment and replies that it's around 40%. Shen chuckles, feeling confident that this is enough to tackle the Wolf King. He decides it's time to get going. As they walk down their path, we notice a group of adventurers watching them closely. And it's clear these folks don't have the best intentions. Once our duo reach the wolf's lair, Shen summons his clones to set some traps before luring the wolf king out. He's pleased to see that the phantom's duration is 60 seconds and the death traps have a cooldown of 30 seconds, meaning each phantom can set two traps per summon, which makes it four traps in total. He snaps his fingers, and just like that, the entire exit of the lair becomes a literal death trap. Shen wonders if he might be overdoing it a bit, while Linger finds it strange that their winning rate hasn't budged at all. As he munches on some meat, he explains that the Wolf King is fast, so they need to make sure it has nowhere to run. Still, Linger looks concerned that their success rate hasn't hit 50% yet. Shen just tells her to trust him and to hide behind one of the trees in the meantime, warning her not to come out no matter what. With that settled, he calls out to the Wolf King and tries to trigger it to face him head on. Shen is sure that as soon as it steps out, it will fall right into his traps. It looks like the King of the Wolves has finally caught the scent of the prey outside. But instead of attacking Shen like a mindless animal it is, it shows some intelligence and retreats back into the cave after sensing the danger. Shen is surprised to see the animal displaying such rationality in its judgment. Meanwhile, Linger watches from behind the tree as Shen keeps calling for the Wolf King to come out. Right at that moment, an unfamiliar hand creeps up to her and covers her mouth, making sure she can't make a sound. It's the eye patch guy from before, and it looks like his crew doesn't know how to mind their own business. Suddenly, Shen gets a notification that the trap has been triggered. He's surprised because the Wolf King hasn't even touched the entrance traps yet. It finally dawns on him that he's been ambushed. When he turns his head, he sees the whole crew of thugs grappling little Linger. She yells to be spared, tears streaming down her face, as one of the goons grabs her by the ponytail and hoists her into the air. Shen's voice cuts through the chaos as he demands they let her go. Linger does not waste this opportunity to sound tough and questions their audacity to kidnap a minor. She also flexes her big guns by reminding them that she has a husband, who is going to whoop their ass if they don't let her go. The thugs can't help but laugh at her threat, wondering how she can call herself a minor and a wife all in one breath. Meanwhile, Shen feels a wave of embarrassment wash over him as Linger calls him her husband. Her childish antics are making him suffocate with cringe. She further pushes his buttons when she starts crying and begging for him to save his precious wife as the thugs refuse to let her go. Shen's embarrassment deepens when the creepy gang members burst into laughter at her declaration, mocking him for being with a little girl. Just like those fool adventurers, these guys are also trying to flex their authority, claiming rights to grind in this area. Shen knows all too well from his previous encounter that this is the territory of the Green Snake Gang. The catcoat-wearing guy then asks how he dares to come here to level up if he knows who owns the place. The catcoat guy further reminds him that his brothers were ambushed here during the day and wants to know if Shen had anything to do with that. Shen confidently claims that he has nothing to do with the defeat of their brothers, suggesting that if they don't believe him, they can just wait for them to revive back and ask directly. The guy in the cat coat scoffs at Shen, throwing shade and claiming they know he's too much of a coward to take down a party of four or five members. He then asks Shen what his real purpose for being there is. Shen casually replies that he's just wandering around. One of the crew members calls his bluff, insisting that there must be a hidden boss nearby. They make it clear that they don't know how Shen got his hands on that information, but all the monsters and rewards in this area belong to them. Shen can't help but think how full of themselves these fools are. He's sure that even if he gave them the chance to take down the Wolf King, they wouldn't stand a chance. But this arrogance is also a blessing in disguise, a perfect opportunity to get rid of this shithead group. So, he proposes that if they let Linger go, the hidden boss will belong to them. The guy in the cat coat feels mocked, unable to believe that someone as pathetic as Shen thinks he can negotiate with him. He promptly asks Shen if he hasn't realized who he's dealing with. Finally, Shen decides to ask the cat guy his name. The sidekick of this guy chimes in and introduces him as Yang Cheng, the third young master. He is the heir to the second largest consortium in Yang Cheng and ranks 27th on the heavenly list. Seems like my guy is not influenced by this bastard's status at all, because he considers them nothing more than commoners for his standards. He remembers that their organization holds 40% of the shares, and even Yang Cheng's father is practically a servant to Shen. Finally, Shen responds by admitting that he's heard a lot about them, but he still doesn't understand the point of the introduction. Yang Cheng smirks and tells our boy to hand over all his valuables and money as punishment for being unruly. Well, that's the last straw. Shen is finally fed up.
he decides it's time to deal with these suckers head-on without holding back. He warns them that he never intended to escalate the situation, but he won't tolerate their superiority complex any longer. Shen extends his hand, preparing to snap his fingers and summon his phantoms, but suddenly, a heavy roar reverberates through the cave, catching them off guard. He feels annoyed that the monster chose this moment out of all to make its presence known. Yang Cheng and his party members smirk, confident in their bravado as they realize there really is a hidden boss in the cave. Yang Cheng rallies his crew, exclaiming that this is their moment to shine and prove what it means to be a member of the Green Snake Gang. He volunteers to lead everyone to the Heavens List, promising to show the world how invincible they truly are. Fueled by this motivational nonsense, the gang marches behind their leader, completely blinded by their excitement. In their eagerness to confront the Wolf King, they even toss Linger back to Shen, deciding to settle their business with him later. Shen thinks about how they're rushing into danger without a shred of preparation. Since they are not ready to listen to reason, he makes it clear that it won't be his fault if they fall into the traps he had set. As soon as they approach the tunnel entrance, the traps snap into action, grabbing them instantly. Now that the traps have been triggered, the Wolf King decides it's time to come out of hiding. The crew is totally bewildered by the monstrous creature in front of them. One of the crew members reports some grim news to the boss that the creature is a level 20 monster. Yang clenches his teeth in frustration and decides it's time to unleash his hidden warrior talent, the Berserker Giant, which he gained in the game. As he lets his power loose, his scrawny body rapidly bulks up, his muscles so massive they shred the shirt he's wearing. His face hardens, and his muscles also gain this rock-like hardness. The system notification pops up, showing off the Berserker Giant's stats, a skill so impressive it even catches Shen's attention. Little Linger asks if he's really going to let these guys steal his treasure and the mission he came here for. Shen just smiles coldly, saying there's no need to rush because he wants to watch these fools struggle. Meanwhile, the entire crew is hyped up to see their third young master, confident he can handle the danger in front of them. Even though the Wolf King is massive, Yang Cheng is confident his talent gives him an insane strength boost. Plus, with so many of them on his side and their healing abilities, he figures he'll be fine, unless the Wolf King manages to take him out in one blow. But he's pretty sure he's got this. Well, his worst nightmare hits him when the Wolf King just swings its claw and punches a hole right through his hardened body. Everyone's jaws drop. Even Shen is stunned to see the Wolf King's Steel Peak Claw ability instantly deal 800 damage with insane speed, a whopping 0.7 second attack that completely ignores defense. Luckily for Yang Cheng, he's still hanging on with 80 health left after that brutal hit. The Wolf King tosses him aside like a piece of trash, and he crashes hard to the ground. Seeing their boss take a hit and fall, the others finally make the smart choice and start running for their miserable lives. Yang Cheng can't help but feel annoyed watching these guys, who were so full of themselves just moments ago, turn into a bunch of cowards. He begins to step forward because it's time to take matters into his own hands from here on out. Meanwhile, the Wolf King lets out a massive roar, signaling his minions to hunt down those fleeing cowards. Yang Cheng's sidekick shouts to her teammates to fight the level 2 wolves and save their leader, but the others aren't exactly eager to throw away their lives like that, so they keep running. One of the guys glances back and sees Shen striding forward instead of retreating. My guy acknowledges Wolf King for the clever tactic of using the others as bait to trigger the traps, but he makes it clear that the next opponent won't be as dumb as these guys. Meanwhile, we see that Yang Cheng is still hanging on, though he's wondering just how dumb someone has to be to actually approach the Wolf King instead of bolting. He has no idea what's going on in Shen's head, but he figures it's best to just play dead until the chaos blows over. As the King's minions charge at our guy, he calmly puts on his mask, making it clear that if they're wolves, then he's the tiger. He unleashes his powers, and just his presence alone sends those low-level wolves flying backward. The Wolf King watches its minions get tossed aside and becomes furious. Before it can react, a barrage of electric arrows comes whizzing toward it. The Wolf King ducks and dodges with lightning speed, and Shen, watching this, grits his teeth in frustration. At that speed, the King is moving way too fast for Shen's accuracy to keep up, which basically means that if he can't control his aim, he won't be able to land a single hit. The Wolf King once again unleashes its Steel Peak Claw, and it seems like Shen barely has time to react. He ends up taking the hit, leaving Little Linger concerned. Thankfully, Shen managed to activate his shield just in time, but the blow still chips away 500 of his HP after draining his shield completely. Still though, he's got a good chunk of health left. The Wolf King snickers after delivering its decisive strike, but Shen responds with a smirk of his own. Even though he's injured, he tells this oversized wolf that he can dodge its attacks too, so it better not get too cocky. 